Hey, Ted. X. Great to be, very close to life, as you can see. What do you see here, everybody? What, what, am, what am I holding in my hand? Yeah, all right. You see a banana? You know what I see? I see a musical instrument. And I'm going to demonstrate. You probably can't see this in the auditorium. Hopefully, you'll see it later online. But on my table here, I have five bananas. And I'm going to play, most appropriately, if this all works, Great Heaven's Fit. Beethoven. Perhaps not yet. Great to be here. By the way, that only works with organic bananas, if you try that at home. So, uh, today I'm going to take you guys on a journey into sound, and I'm going to show you how you can transport yourselves to other dimensions, and how you can change the world around you using an ordinary, everyday magic. And the fuel for this voyage is called imagination. And if you harness it correctly, you literally can change and shape the future. Um, <clears throat> but like, imagination alone is probably not enough. We also need a flight plan, we need a manual. And I'm gonna show you a few basic principles that could get your creative dreams up in the air. But we need to go back in time first, way back in time. This is me, age five. <laughs> See, I was brought up an only, I was raised an only child. That didn't go down very well with my other six brothers and sisters. But uh, <laughs> my mother encouraged us all to, to, to create, to invent, and to imagine. And uh, age five, I became obsessed with scrap metal. And with my parents' help, I started collecting bits from junkyards and farmhouses. My plan, my plan was simply to build a rocket to get the hell out of here. Now, and pretty soon the garden and the house was groaning under the weight of car parts and old bits of washing machine. But after, after months of tinkering, it was clear that escaping Earth's gravity was merely a distant dream. And a few years later, we moved to a village in the UK close to Stonehenge. And every weekend, I'd get on my bicycle and I'd cycle up here with one of those measuring wheels. And I would measure the distances between all the stones and I'd take the data home and I'd stick it up on a whiteboard in my bedroom and I'd study it, convinced I was going to find this secret code that would open a portal to another dimension. Sadly, teleportation has evaded me to this day. <clears throat> However, age 12, I stumbled upon this in a second-hand store. This dusty old synthesizer. It's called an ARP2600, for those who care about that kind of thing. <clears throat> but I bust my piggy bank, took it home, plugged it in, and boom! <laughs> I was hooked, because here was the machine that I could shape entire worlds of sound with. With this machine, I could make any sound that anyone in here could imagine, and even sounds you probably can't imagine. Yeah, <laughs> pretty crazy stuff. Now, my mum, both my parents in fact, instilled great self-belief in me and all of my brothers and sisters. And her maxim was this, do whatever you want to do with your life. Be a trapeze artist, be a street cleaner, be a rapper, be a marine biologist. But be the best in class. Be the fastest, most articulate rapper. Be the keenest street cleaner. Do what you want and do what you love. <clears throat> but commit yourself to it. Focus, persevere. And this is the difficult one. Be your own harshest critic. Be your own harshest critic. I remember my first day at the, the, career, the career advisor at my school in England. So, Mr. Fines, what do you want to do with your life? And I'm, well, I love science fiction. I love music, and I, I thought perhaps we could meld them together and I could train and become a sonic time lord. Ooh, sonic time lord. Well, we don't have many openings for that, but uh, can I suggest you take a course in accounting or media studies? I'm like, no. <laughs> for a while I considered becoming an astrophysicist, but at this stage in my life, the music part had really gotten hold of me. 
And it didn't take much research to see which of these two careers was going to get me the most curls. <laughs> so I went that way. Not exactly that way. <laughs> I had more girls. Anyway. Ah, let me introduce you. Okay, this is, I'm going to introduce you to my family here because I never went to school. I never went to college. Like after that, I got into music, that was it. I never went to college, rather tragically. But neither did any of my brothers or sisters. I think we were all unteachable dreamers at this stage. So you can meet some of my family. Here's my eldest brother, Voldemort, the Lord of Darkness. I had to share a bedroom with this guy, okay? I had to share a bedroom with this guy. My younger brother, Joseph, a.k.a. Shakespeare. I think he's uh, deciding whether to be or not to be in this picture. My sister Martha, here directing Penelope Cruz in one of her movies. My younger sister Sophie, picking up yet another award, one of her very compelling and amazing documentaries. And that's me, age two, working out. <laughs> you see, not a single diploma between us, rather tragically. Rather tragically, but you see, I mean, education is a wonderful thing, and we're here in this great establishment of learning. And I just think that it should come with a caution sticker, like meds. You know, like, school, just follow instructions. Warning, this education system does not necessarily guarantee your survival in the real world. Side effects may cause drowsiness. Boredom may develop negative feelings towards your teachers. <laughs> so. Where do I go from there? Rule number one. I'm going to show you some principles that I adhere to that got my imagination working for me so I didn't have to work. Rule number one, work is for suckers. Because here's a confession. I never did a day's work in my life. Never. But I put in more hours than an army of insomniacs in a Chinese laundry because I'm doing what I love. Every second. Love every second and every minute of what I do. <clears throat> which is a great honor. Now, let's get off that picture. It's rather depressing, isn't it? So uh, here's how my career started. I got my break in my early 20s when I got a phone call from a very famous record producer. And he was looking for a keyboard player and a programmer who could come to LA, I was in London by the way, to work on a record. Now, if anyone here has been to London, it's cold, it's grey, it's drizzly, that's like an invitation to Narnia. I'm, like, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, absolutely doing this. The problem was, this is a case of mistaken identity, because this record producer thought that I knew how to operate this incredible new piece of software called Pro Tools. We are talking about a while back here. I'd, I'd heard about it, it was the holy grail of music production, but I told him, of course I can do that, of course I can do that. I panic, got off the phone, called a friend of a friend of a friend who had the manual, got on the plane, read the manual, back to front on the plane, 11 hours, landed, picked up, came to the studio, flying by the seat of my pants, turned on the computer, and somehow winged it. Somehow I got through it, got the gig, and that was a, a great step up for me, just by sticking, sticking my neck out. And on this recording session, here's my next point, turn up your intuition. I had the great honor and pleasure of working with this guy, Lenny Kravitz. I think he had more clothes on when I was working with him. I, I don't remember the snake either. But here was I, I was this young English upstart in the studio with this rock god. And uh, he was about to play his guitar solo, and I had this, I had all the manuscript and the score, and I was telling him what modes and articulations he should use. And he just gave me this withering look and threw the paper to the floor and said, hey, listen, man, I don't know notes. I play music, so roll it. You see, Lenny worked from intuition, from gut. Like, any, like most great musicians, it comes from the heart, and you have to learn to believe in your ability to make the right critical decision is something he had. More recently, I worked with the lovely Shakira. She also has this incredible intuitive ability to know what she's doing, whether something's right or wrong, and, and particularly with rhythm and groove. She has this amazing sense of, of rhythm, and we'll be in rehearsals, and, and suddenly she's, Magnus, Magnus, I can't dance. And I'm, oh my God, and I go to the drummer and percussionist, and we tweak the beats, and suddenly she's, ah, it's okay. Waka waka, she could do it. <laughs> she was back in, she was back in the space. God, for that, it would have been a disaster. This, is, this next point is quite controversial. This is, I really believe in this principle, everyone. Smash it up. I don't mean literally smash it up, so, Cheyenne, you can put that baseball bat away. Um, but, I think that the secret of great art is we have to get out of the comfort zone. We have absolutely, to create, we must destroy, quite often. 
The best art violates expectation. It defies the norm. And <clears throat> as a pop songwriter, I've kind of learned that the trick with a great pop song is you deliver something that feels familiar, and <clears throat> but within it you smuggle in a small element of the unconventional, of the risky. And that's an example, I Kissed a Girl by Kate Perry. Maybe she did, maybe she didn't. But the point is, this was a pretty straight up sugary pop song, and you add a little bit of a naughty risque lyric, and it's a smash hit. Or take a movie like The Artist. This was the winner of the Academy Award last year. This film is in black and white, and it's silent. It defied expectation, um, and it was a hit. It did something different. Uh, which is, I think, we should, something we should all do in summing up. I think everyone in this room here is a genius, capable of super heroic feats of imagination. You just got to learn how to use it, power it up, and we can all take this voyage here. You know, and even anyone in the room here who gets low grades, you're the most brilliant, probably. I just think the education system maybe hasn't figured out your thing, but that's their bad, not yours. So I'm going to leave you on that note. Um, and whatever you do, basket weaving, rocket science, pet grooming, get into it, give it your all, uh, go do that voodoo that you do so well. Thank you.